Hello everyone, welcome back to the TG Omega channel for day 939 of daily Transformers content. Well, every now and then it's not Transformers, but you know what I mean. We're doing another tier list today, and this day we are bringing you the Beast Wars toy line. However, there is a little bit of a caveat to this. So, um, number one, there's a lot of toys in Beast Wars to cover. So we are going to we uh we're we're gonna be trying very hard uh to uh, kind of get all this done as quickly as possible. So I might not have full opinions on everything. Uh, also, we're, we're, we're being forced to split this in half. So the way I decided to approach this was to do all of the normal Beast Wars toys, though, you know, uh, 96 and 97, essentially, outside of things like Happy Meal toys and convention exclusives, as one list. And then we will revisit this list or tack a part two onto it where we will talk about Fusors, Transmetals, Transmetal 2s, etc. So we're going to go a little bit weird with it. But for now, it's just a pretty basic list of all of the essential animal beast wars. And uh, I'm going to try and get through this as best as I can. Because I will admit, I started doing this before and then realized my standards are not quite right. I need to like readjust my head as to where all of this stuff goes. Uh, so... Let us begin. We will try. We we'll, let me try this again. Uh, we'll start with Air Razor, who makes for a very nice basic class Beast Wars toy. Uh, the mold works. The color scheme is fine. It's yellow and brown, so obviously, yeah, it works together all right. Um, the head design is nice. I like the sculpting of the overall figure. Uh, it's not too like gimmicky loader or anything. No, she is a very very nice figure. That goes to Armadillo who is a spring-loaded transformation, but I think wears it pretty well. All the spring-loaded ones are kind of uh, kind of carrying whatever back kibble is, you know, makes up their beast mode. And basically, however well they wear that determines how good the toy is. Armadillo is fine in that regard. His weapon implementation, that, that's a little bit weird because it does make his weapons extremely awkward. So I'm, I'm bumping him down to the retail release. Uh, then we get to Baboon, who is actually quite a fun toy. So aside from just like the Baboon looks good, um, he also has a really cool looking robot mode. It's heavily armed. I love how heavily armed this one is. And it has an artillery mode that, unlike a lot of the Beast Wars Neo ones, actually looks like it's designed to be there intentionally. Right down to having an additional robot head just so he can, like, stare out. Uh, so it's it it's a good figure. It, it's, a, it's a fun figure that does quite a bit. So let's, let's bump him all the way up to Holy Grail, shall we? I think that's appropriate. Um, we're going to do a controversial choice here. Black Arachnia. So we're completely divorcing this from cartoon accuracy because, of course, cartoon took heavy liberties, as well as cartoon character. We are judging it solely based on how the toy looks and how it functions. Black Arachnia is a tarantula mold that had a Black Widow spider crammed into it color-wise, and then in robot mode, the color scheme goes all over the place, and I don't think really looks that good. So unfortunately, like the mold itself is fine. The mold itself is fine, but I am bargain binning the toy itself because it's just not the best looking thing. It's just, it's just not. I'm sorry. It's just not. Uh, Bone Crusher. Uh, Bone Crusher is about middle of the road, I think, for deluxes. Uh, the gimmick itself, the headbutt gimmick and, you know, missile spitting, that's fine. But you do have a ton of kibble sticking back off of him in order to make all of that work. Uh, it is a fairly bland color scheme because it's all monochrome. So uh, it's, you know, it's not the most playable beast mode. We'll put it that way. It's, it's just a big chunk of black plastic shaped like a bison. Uh, I do like him better than Armadillo. I'll, I'll, bump, I'll bump him to that point. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw is, <laughs> Buzzsaw, I honestly feel is Waspinator done better, just as a toy. I think the colors look a lot fiercer on the mold. It makes the beast mode look a lot better to have a uniform Hornet color scheme rather than the green and yellow. Um, you know, Waspinator is iconic, but when you talk with his original toy, it's not, the, it's not the best toy engineered, right? Like, so the legs can be kind of unstable depending on weight, depending on how tightly they, uh, 
the bug legs clipped together into the robot legs. His bug legs on his arms kind of interfere in things. You know, I am willing to put Buzzsaw at the top, you know, at the bottom side of the premium price because of how good he looks. But that's about it. I'll tell you where the mold really sits when we get to Waspinator. Cheetor is, again, a nice figure. Um, Cheetor himself, really, for Beast Wars toys, doesn't really do anything wrong, you know? Um, like, obviously, it's a very beefy-looking cheetah, but they had to get more than one cat out of that mold, so, okay, we'll go with that. It's an odd one. Uh, but having two hidden weapons works pretty well. It's got a water squirter in there, which is not a bad thing. It's, uh, you know, for a deluxe to have. Not many deluxes did have that gimmick. And overall, it looks good. The yellow and blue works. Nothing really, nothing real of his animal parts really gets in the way. I think he does a nice job. I think he's a very nice figure. CicadaCon is interesting in that I kind of feel like he does Waspinator better than Waspinator. <laughs> Because he casts a similar silhouette, he has a similar transformation about him, but he's just a tighter figure overall. The legs are a lot more stable. He's just way bulkier in the chest because he has to hide a combiner head inside of him. So in that, and keeping in mind, yeah, the combiner side of him does play a factor into him. The fact that he can combine with two others. I think that actually puts him probably low end of the premium. He is a very nice, he's surprisingly nice, considering he's the top of a combiner. Uh, Clawjaw, one of those beasts where it's like, how do you turn a squid into a robot? Oh, that's how. Okay, that kind of works. And it's fun that they actually got like the little like clampy jaw gimmick to work in the size of a basic figure too. Color scheme is okay. It's orange and red, of course, that's going to work well, but he carries the colors nice enough. Uh, I like the tendrils hanging over the shoulders. It's kind of like these big wing things. Uh, it's it's overall, it's not a bad figure. I'm not going to place it terribly high, but like middle of the retail kind of feels right. Uh, Cyber Shark is going to be a divisive one. Cyber Shark looks fantastic in beast mode, and I love me a hammerhead shark. Uh, robot mode looks fine as well. The manic face really helps sell some character to him. The trick is to Cyber Shark is he kind of cheats in transformation. The transformation aspect of him is very dull. It's very rudimentary and you're just you're taking the two ends of the fish off to become individual weapons. And while gimmick wise, he does quite a bit. Uh, if you're looking for a transformation experience, he's lacking. Um, for character, I kind of want him up top at retail. But I am missing something from the package. I just wish the transformation integrated more of the shark parts. And I wish it was a more interesting toy to transform. Dinobot is a difficult one. So, of course, we're not going to judge based on how accurate it is or anything like that. We had to judge it based on solely what exists on the toy. The toy itself looks fine. You know, the light brown isn't as fleshy as the Target exclusive modern version would have you have believed. Uh, in person, it's fine. You do have the weird giant robot legs under the chest. So, like, they didn't do the best job of tucking away the robot in the beast mode. But overall, like, the spin tail is a fun gimmick for a deluxe. He overall looks fine. Like, he's doing, like, he's not really doing anything terribly wrong in robot mode outside of using translucent plastic for his knees but he seems to be holding up pretty well last time i checked um i think i want to put him higher up on the retail end maybe a little bit lower because i think cyber shark is a little bit more fun to play with with the gimmicks just not as interesting in transformation uh but dino dinobot's got kind of the opposite a little bit less in the a little bit less in the gimmicky stuff and then a little bit more interesting in transformation steps so this is like an either or i think if the deco on grim uh, or, uh, or on uh, dinobot was a little bit better i would put him above cyber shark cyber shark definitely has the look going for him though drill bit why did we do a bull weevil as a dude we run out of interesting bugs Surely there are more bugs and lizards we could have used in Beast Wars and not done a bull weevil. 
Um, the brown and the purple don't really work for me. The, you know, the added translucent plastic doesn't work for me and not just fragility. I just think it looks bad on him. Uh, just the overall, just it's not, it's not the most interesting thing. It, it doesn't look all that great. Um, I'm putting him to flea market now. He might be on the higher end of the flea market. I mean, it's just, he's just not interesting as a toy. You know, it's just, a, it's a bad beast mode, it's a bad color scheme, and, like, gimmick and transformation can only do so much to make me more interested in him, and I can't really get that, so, down he goes. Alright, so, Grimlock here, do we knock points for the gold plastic? Because that wasn't by design, that was accidental, um... That said, I hate the deco on this thing. This is, again, a very personal preference list. I don't like the, I don't like the Dalmatian deco. It, it just does, I can't take, I can't take him seriously. He's a Grimlock I can't take seriously. And there you have failed as a Grimlock. You have absolutely failed as a Grimlock. Um, no, no, not above the original. Bargain bin down to bargain bin you've taken a toy that you know had at least a, an interesting look and i think you made it less interesting in the repaint which is not what you should do that's like the opposite of what you should do inferno is another iffy one um toy wise he looks fine he looks cool um you know giant ant mode works fine he does suffer several issues um he is very back heavy in robot mode and a lot of times it's easy for his legs to not have the tightness in the joints it needs to support that uh, so that usually knocks him points uh he's very difficult to also stand up in ant mode on his ant legs that docks some points um gimmick wise he's fine the big the big spinny butt gimmick works fine uh, I, I, mm, mm. yeah, I kind of want to put him bottom of retail. I feel, I feel like that's disrespecting him, but that's based on like how nice his character is in the show. If I'm going by just how good the toy is, he's not that good of a toy. You know, he's just kind of there. Um, I can say the guy kind of say the same thing about Iguanas here. Iguanas doesn't really excel in the basic category. It's a very simple you know, very, you know, very, like, by-the-numbers kind of figure. You know, the Frill Lizard mode is fine. Tail weapon, pretty typical Beast Wars. The yellow and green work. Yellow and green together works as a, as a design. But he is, he is just very, very simple. He's just very, very simple. Uh, I think a lot of the, I think a lot of year one basics are going to be like that. Unless they do something really, really neat or come together really well. Uh, does that apply to Insecticon? So the dark blue and the greens work for me. The beetle mode is a little bit more interesting to me than a ball weevil. Um, it's kind of a shame. Like this is the one that was supposed to be in the show and then got cut at the last minute because budgets. Um, he's a nice design though. I, I do like the overall design. Uh, he technically he wears the flip form gimmick well because you know it's a beetle shell. So ending up on his back kind of makes sense. Yeah, overall, I think he's got a nice look to him. I think I think I think he's got a nice look to him. I want to put him like bottom of premium. I feel I feel like he's kind of like, kind of in there. He looks a little bit. He looks more interesting. Like he he strikes me better than Iguanas. Iguanas is kind of doing like very. They're they're both basically doing the same thing because all the year one flip formers kind of did, did the same thing. He's just carrying it so much better. He looks more interesting to me. Again, personal preferences. Iron Hide. Mm. So we have to judge this completely separately based on individual toys. These were not available individually. They were only part of the combiner multi packs. So when we talk about this figure, um, I, I I need to include that. I I, I, I acknowledge he is suffering a lot because he is the bulk of Magna Boss's everything that said on his own he's a rough toy he's a really rough toy he definitely casts a unique appearance in beast wars but he he just kind of looks like a frankenstein monster 
and it just does not come together very well. And I, I really think they didn't really try that hard to like push his own character. Like that all like the solid red head does nothing for me. Like I really feel like they kind of like forgot to make something of him. Uh yeah, very low on the bargain bin. There's something there. I'm not horribly offended by him. He's just got a lot of weaknesses to him. He's he's just not a great figure on his own. Jetstorm. Hmm. Jetstorm is another weird one. Uh, it's one of those year two Predacons that, where they're trying to be much more vibrant with the color schemes. I do like the Dragonfly mode. It's a little bulkier than I would like, but, you know, the robot had to go somewhere. He does have, also have the Water Squirter gimmick, so that came back around. I don't think this one comes together quite as well as the likes of, like, Cheetor, though. Like, I think he's a more interesting transformation than, like, Cyber Shark. Uh, and a more, you know, and he's got his own special look to him. Like, I like how all the wings on him come upwards instead of just, like, hanging off of his back like traditional wings. I like that aspect of him. It's not the greatest of figures, though. I tend to like his Japanese color scheme a little bit better. K9. Potentially in running for one of the worst names in Transformers because it's just a dull name. Um... So you turn a wolf sculpt into a German shepherd. And all right, so my family's always been a German shepherd house. So I've had a, I've, I've known a lot of German shepherds in my life. Um, he's not, in the way the Cheetor is a good cheetah, he is a good German shepherd. If that, am I, is that an unintentional dig at K9? Um, so, like, comparing him to, like, Wolfang, I like the sculpting better, like, the design, the robot mode designing, design work, I think, is a little bit more interesting than on Wolfang. Color scheme is definitely more interesting, there's a lot more airbrushing, you know, it's not, it's not so flat and barren, so, I wanna, and he's a good toy, like, overall, he is a good, good toy, he's a, canine's a good boy, canine is good boy, um, do I wanna put him, like, really high up on this list, though? No, I kind of do. Like, if a deluxe can go up to the Holy Grail level, I kind of want to put K9 there. Um, there might be a little bit of bias. There might be a little bit of bias, but I, I think they did a really, really good job on that one. Uh, Laser Beak. Spelled as 90s as we could, with a Z in it, for trademark reasons. I like this color scheme more than Terror Soar. I think it's a way more ferocious and menacing look to him. The striping across the chest looks really cool. Like, they look like brutal battle scars, you know? Uh, like, the red face buried in the dark purple helmet. That looks super cool. Like, that's a much more interesting look to me. You know? Uh, yeah. Uh, the basic, the figure itself is just kind of there. You know, like, I don't think he wears the, 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 uh, the, uh, the spring loaded transformation as well. Most of his beast mode is just on his back. Cause Hey, whether it's a jet or a pteranodon, that's just kind of the thing. So I can't put him terribly high, but I do want to put him up. I do want to put him up somewhere in the premiums, low end of the premiums. Cause again, kind of basic is a figure. Oh, but the colors do so much for him. The paintwork does so much for him. Man Terror is one that I only recently got to experience. Like last year, I finally went and bought one. And I did, I mean, and it's a nice, it's a nice, it does more than I expected it to do. Uh, disc launching for starters, really rare in Beast Wars, uh, especially at the Deluxe line. I think he's the only, uh, I mean, he might, he might be the only disc launcher in the, in the Beast Wars lineup of, for, of Deluxes. Uh, and he does more transforming than I expected. He really was one where I just kind of expected just like flip his beast mode head down to reveal robot head and just undo his abdomen to stand him up. He does a little bit more than that. He's actually a little bit more interesting. And to my surprise, despite like I thought the ball joints would never hold up uh, for just how long and lanky his limbs are, he holds up. Uh, overall, he, I do think he is a really fun and nice figure. I am going to put him up to the premium level. I really, really like him. And again, sculpting and color-wise, the purple hits really well with the green. Um, the head sculpt, I really, really like. I mean, it's a very, like, it's a scary-looking Predacon you know, with the big claw hands and all that. 
Yes, I am biased to man mantises, but I genuinely feel it's a very nice figure. All right, Optimus Primal the Bat. Um, this is weird. So uh, this is supposed to all be alphabetical, but my Megatrons and my Optimi are not in the right places. So we'll just go with it. We'll go with it as it is. Um, overall, yeah. Um, overall, yeah. Um, the Optimus Primal is again fairly basic. I think he carries it well again. I think I think he does carry it. Like for a winged beast, he carries it better than Pterosaur does. I think that has to do with the fact that the wing silhouette just looks way better. There's something about the upside down wing silhouette that just looks weird on Pterosaur and thus on Laserbeak as well. But when it's right side up like it is here, it just hits nicer. Uh, also, the twin sword weapons. I really like it. I like a bot that comes with twin swords. Uh, color scheme works. The grays and the blues. Uh, work really well. There's some, there is some Optimus Prime in him, but he's still doing something on his own. Uh, I don't want to put him terribly high. I don't want to put him terribly high. Uh, I still think he goes up there. I still really like him as a toy. All right, Megatron. This one is hmm. So the Beast Mode is amazing, right? We agree the Beast Mode on Megatron is amazing. Water Squirter gimmick, okay, yes, he's got missile launchers as well, lots of armaments and blast options. Um, transformation's fine, like, there is, he does have quite a bit of a transformation to him. Like, I can remember, as a kid, someone handing me this toy for the first time, going, like, here, mess with this, try to transform it. Couldn't quite do it, you know, and I don't, I mess with a lot of Transformers as a kid. I thought I'd be able to nail it. I could not. So... In that regard, yes, once we get into robot mode, oh my god, and this isn't me comparing him to the cartoon model, the robot mode is just very plain looking, like they did not put any color on this boy's torso at all, it's just flat black all over with purple man panties, so... Deco wise like, play-wise, he's fine, he's really good play-wise, and then it's just that... The Deco is just dragging him, dragging him down. I'm still going to put him Holy Grail because the T-Rex is really nice. And again, lots of gimmicks, interesting transformation. But mm, mm. no, no, I, I can't. I, man, that, that Deco just hurts. It hurts, man. Okay, uh, Polar Claw. So another one of those Beast Wars. Like This was very much counterpoint to the Scorponok Mega because he had the same kind of, like, hidden drone gimmick going on. Very beefy figure for Beast Wars, though. A lot of Beast Wars figures tend to be on the thinner side, because, you know, of course, you know, the Beast does not allow them to have a whole lot of bulk. A little bit different on a bear, though. So, yeah, as that goes, works well. The white, the red, you know, hits nice. I like that they gave the face a unique color to make it stand out a little bit, so that all works really, really well. Um, overall, very solid figure. I don't know if I like him as much as Baboom, but I'm confident putting him pretty high on the list. Uh, yeah, Justice for Kingdom Polar Claw, by the way. Still waiting. Still waiting. Optimus Primal. Again, a toy with a lot going on. So, he's one of those, like, He's, he's because it's a gorilla into a humanoid robot. You start to think like, well, how interesting can it be? I think it keeps it interesting enough in the transformation. Yes, it's a lot simpler than turning a raptor into a robot, but the simplicity also allowed them to do a few extra things with them. So this guy is gimmick loaded. He's got the mutant head. He's got his twin swords. He's got a mace. He's got flip out guns on one side side that are missile launchers. He's got missile launchers that flip out the back. He's got a chest pounding gimmick for the beast mode and he still keeps a full uh, range of articulation he does a lot and unlike megatron there's actual design work and color in his torso so he's already getting some good points here oh <sighs> yeah um there's a lot to like on him um yeah i i think i think he belongs to the top I think it belongs to the top. I feel like it's cliche to put Optimus Prime at the top of any tier list. Like, oh, yeah, like, Prime's the best toy. 
or primal in this case, genuinely feel that way. I genuinely feel like that. I, I, I mean, I think I think he's earned it this time. And then we get Power Pinch. Again, did we run out of all the good bugs? Where are the good bugs? Like, where are the interesting bugs? Um, so we have an ear we have an earwig, which is an interesting looking creature, but not something like I've never met a kid who went, oh cool, a toy earwig. I've never met that. Uh color scheme's fine. Color scheme's fine. It's much more vibrant than the year ones, but it actually, you know, uh, it kind of works in this case. I don't know. It's just, again, it's, it's an uninspired beast mode. That just really just makes me feel like, man, this is uh, not as exciting as I really wanted to be. It's not as cool as it, as some of the other Predacons. All right. Now, do you want a surprise? Do you want a surprise? Because the prowl part of uh, the prowl, like the prowl section of Magnaboss He's a really good toy on his own. Like, he doesn't need to combine in order to be interesting. It's kind of running a similar transformation to the Cheetor sculpt, but at a much smaller size uh, and uh, actually carries it pretty well. He does have like a big chunk of kibble for where his lion mane went, but I do think it, he kind of wears it fairly well. Um, I could use a little bit difference in the color scheme. That's where Lyo Jr. kind of works a little bit better. But he is surprisingly nice. He is a surprisingly nice toy all in his own. Makes me wish that we had a bigger lion transformer in like year one Beast Wars. So there we go. Uh, very, very nice figure. And we get to Ram Horn. Um, I really feel like of all of the combiners, like if if, if Ironhide suffers for Magnaboss, then it's Ramhorn that suffers from for uh, Tripredicus. He looks okay overall, but he does get a little bit doofy looking at times. He's again trying to make brown and purple work, which I don't think does work. And you know, he just just doesn't come off as cool as his other teammates like there's just something off about the deck about the overall design that i don't think just hits as cool as the other tripredicus members uh he'll uh, it might be wrong i might be wrong because it's been a while since i messed with one but i can remember mine being kind of rickety too because he has to form the arms so he's got this big like like armature and you know combination gimmick you know crammed into his robot so things are just kind of like a little bit herky-jerky in his engineering. Uh, so on his own, I'm going to put him high to the bargain bin, but I still don't think he's that great of a figure on his own. Yeah, uh, it's just unfortunate. Someone, someone's someone got to go to the lower end of the of this. I got. I mean, I'm going to stick him there. Uh, Razor Beast. Okay, pour, like, pour one out for Razor Beast, who can't appear in comic books and survive. That's just a rule. Um, I, th I think if we include IDW and the whole, like, Onyx Prime thing, uh, yeah, I, th I think that, I think that would make, like, three times. <laughs> Poor Razor Beast. Um, the toy itself is good. The toy itself is good. I do like the sculpting on it. Um, he does do a decent job of adapting the Warthog into his, into a robot mode, and, uh, he does have back shell because he's a spring former. He does a decent job wearing it. Uh, and I don't remember being anything really like too offensive about his overall design. I think I, I, I like him pretty well. Um, I don't want to put him too high up because I think his I think his overall design could be a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think high end of the retail is about the spot I want to put him in. I need to leave room because I think there's basics that do a little bit more that are still to come on the list. Razor Claw, for instance. I really like Razor Claw. It's a simple little crab transformer, but kind of works for me. I like how the shell becomes this like like high silhouette, like this like high shoulder armor. It kind of accentuates the silhouette a little bit. Uh, the color scheme is again a little bit more out there since it's a year two basic, but it works. It works. I think I, I think I like this one uh, a little bit more. I think the color scheme gets more interesting, and the toy looks a little bit better. When you get to his transmetal version, his repaint, 
we're not talking about that in this list. We have to judge them as is. Um, as is, I want kind of want to put him top of retail. I don't think he wears his kibble as well as some of the others that are in the premium price, but I think I think he works there. I like that toy well enough. Here's another controversy one. So Rat Trap. Um, okay, we remember we put our love of the characters aside. We judge it based solely on being the toy. Is it a cute little mouse in beast mode? Yes, it is. That's what it has to be. When we get to robot mode, I do find the deco a little bit dull. Uh, the bronze does kind of work with the silver and gray. Don't get me wrong. It's the head design where it's just gray and silver, where I really think they could have done a little bit more. Again, not meaning show accuracy, just it just looks very plain, you know? And then there is, you know, how much kibble he wears on his back. And again, it's about the same as any of the others, but again, it's about how well you wear it. And I don't think Rat Trap wears his very well at all. It's a, it's a very large backpack that sticks out quite a bit compared to most of the others. You know, and it doesn't have the benefit of being wings to kind of look nice. Instead, it's just a bunch of little rat legs. And that don't look good. So, like, I'm sorry to Rat Trap fans, but he's he's got to go down. He's got to go down. He'll get his revenge when he when he goes trans metal. Trans metal is a different story, but for now, like the bar, like I, I gotta put him down there. I gotta put him in the bargain bin for now. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, and then we get to Gator Megatron. Again, again, first year basic. Again, tail weapon. He's kind of basically iguanas because, well, what am I talking about? It's the same tooling. I am gonna put him a little bit higher. Because I do think the gator is a little bit more fun than just the frill lizard. Um, but you know what? No. I'm going to change that. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it. I think Iguanus is better. The color, it's its me realizing, oh, the color scheme is way nicer. Like, Megatron is two-tone green in a way where you can barely tell there's two shades of green on him. So, no. <sighs> Retracts. Down you go. I didn't take long at all now, did it? Uh, no surprises there whatsoever. Uh, we don't have to talk about him. I've got a whole episode devoted to him. I'm not going to talk about him anymore. Um, Rhinox. Rhinox is, again, one where I have to put the character design from the show and the love of the character aside and just judge it based on the toy. And let's be frank, the toy is not that great. Uh, the rendering of the Rhino is not all that good. It's a very, like... It's a very squat and like squashed take on a rhinoceros, uh, as well as the fact that it's it's just so it's so kibble loaded in the robot mode. I mean, the spinny weapon gimmick is fine. Spinny weapon gimmick is fine. He's just got so much shell panel sticking out everywhere. It's just not as fun to mess with that figure as it should be. Uh, so, yeah, I've got to. Yeah, I got to be honest, it's not a great toy. Is unfortunately not a great toy. Rhinox is just has a hard time having a really nice figure. So good on him for getting a masterpiece. That looks like it might be like the first one we can all agree look really, really, really good. Scorponok. Uh, again, cartoon accuracy aside, but not a bad thing in this case. Uh, black and red just works. Uh, the extra silver and purple, that works too. So it's it's a much nicer looking figure. I like that it's gimmick loaded in a way where everything works in all three in uh, both of his modes. It's again, not the most amazing transformation, but that leaves room for them to do cool things with, you know, the, the scorpion itself. Cause you want the scorpion to do cool things. I want his claw to pinch. I want his tail to sting. So if a simple, tra if a simple robot mode gets all those things to work and gets me this cool scorpion figure, you know, okay, cool. I'm good with that. I want that. That's cool. And again, yeah, uh, Cyber Bee. Uh, thanks to the show, it's one of the most well-known gimmicks in Beast Wars. How high do I put him up? How high do I put him up? Because what's keeping a lot of the characters in the Holy Grail is interesting transformations. Um, yeah, Scorponok, gimmick loaded, but it's not an interesting transformation. So I don't think I can bump him to Holy Grail. 
C clamp is surprisingly nice considering he is a lobster. They kind of take advantage of the fact that, you know, it's a pretty simple conversion to the robot mode and it kind of works. It kind of works. He does have like that Scorponok thing of like claw hands going long arms and all that, but he does it in a smaller scale. It works well. He does a good enough job of separating himself from Scorponok in that. He does have the brown and purple thing going on, but it's a far more subdued and organic brown and something in me like prefers that over like the more rich browns against the purples like like ram horn where I don't think it works. Uh, so overall design, I like it better. Uh, yeah, so t it turns out, uh, yes, it's some of these, some of these, you know, it, you know, I can't put it too high because, you know, gimmickry wise, he's got a missile launcher. That's about it. So he's not the most interesting figure, but, you know, I think middle of the retail, I think he works well enough to go there. Skywarp. If you're watching Beast Wars second, I've trained my brain to call him Skywarp. So we don't confuse the two silver bolts, but I realize in this list that might be even more confusing because silver bolt is for the next list. So non fuse or silver bolt. It's a not okay. Um, it's a bargain bin figure. It's a bargain bin figure. Um, and actually, honestly, it's very close to being flea market level. Uh, and this is putting aside the fact that it does have gold plastic problems. The Eagle mode looks fine. It doesn't do a whole lot because of the combiner engineering, you know, because it has to also be the spring loaded launchers on Magna Boss. Uh, but the robot mode is extremely basic, extremely lacking in deco. It's just flat brown through most of the body. Um, it's the entirety of the beast mode hanging off the back. It's just a boring toy on its own. It's just a dull figure with a very big backpack of parts. And yeah, again, I really wish they had put more thought and effort into making the individual characters from Magna Boss look more interesting because they are screaming for some kind of deco, some kind of paint. All right, Snarl. So Snarl's again got one of those like, it's something that plagued the basics is having nowhere to really put the gun. So it's just kind of mounted on a forearm or like awkwardly in his palm. Uh, but the overall design is good. He does play very different to a lot of Beast Wars designs in that the head becomes the feet, you know, and creates a much more interesting transformation for a basic and a very different look overall, you know, whereas he would probably look very similar to Razor Beast in another regard. Um, I do like him better than Razor Beast. Um, let's see. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm comparing him to the other basics, I actually want to put him higher than the rest. So we'll put him up to premium. I really like Snarl. Really like Snarl. I was really happy when he got a modern one. It's Tasmania Kid, but whatever. He, you know, it's a nice toy that got a new design. Spitor. So... Translucent, translucent plastic hatred aside, Spitor is not bad in what he does. Okay, so blue, you know, blue poison tree frog, that's fine. I do take a little bit issue of just how overly dark his robot mode is. I do think the black and blues kind of make some details get lost amongst each other. Um, the bright yellow hits are nice. I wish I had a few more of them. Um, other than that, kind of on the basic side. Nothing terribly interesting. He's again one that I feel like his his trans metal repaint was actually a better figure in general. Tarantulas, you're never going to see a purple tarantula in in your life. However, um, the overall design on this one not bad. Again, the toy itself is not bad. It's just what do you do with the deco? I do like the purple and yellow. It's a completely it's a fantasy spider. Okay. Um, which I actually think plays better into it. Black Arachnia is a real world spider trying to be, you know, getting forced into the wrong shape. Whereas this is just a creepy fantasy spider and we can just judge it as such without directly comparing it to, you know, Tarantula. There should be brown or, or black. So in this case, yeah, it works. Again, I wish the head had more deco. Like the head, the head on this guy is kind of on the boring side. 
But again, kind of simple figure. Kind of simple figure. Again, Deco drags it down a little bit, but still, it's all right. It's all right. Snapper. So once again, we have a toy that does wear the auto-morphing gimmick well. Uh, it's using the rear end of the t of, of the gimmick. So, you know, the rear portion of the shell and the tail make for a more interesting chest than just an animal head. Of course, you know, the shell still being on its back makes absolute sense. Um, the red and green. It's interesting that they cast this toy in red and green without him ending up like Christmassy in any way. Like the colors aren't right for that, uh, which does make it look a little bit more interesting to me. The ro the turtle mode in general also just looks really nice or tortoise mode. Let's be correct. Let's be anatomically correct here. Really like snapper. Really like snapper. Uh, I'm going to put low end to premium. Tigatron. All right. So we kind of judged Cheetor for being this really fat looking cheetah. I do think it works better on the tiger. And I do think going with a white tiger is more appropriate. That said, it's weird that they still like went with like a cream color to the deco rather than like a pure white fur that you would expect out of a white tiger. So it's a little bit of an odd deco choice. Uh, but there is something about the cream and the in the green that actually does kind of work. It's very minty. It's like, like I kind of want ice cream when I look at Tigatron's original toy. Yeah, I think he is a step above Cheetor. Still a really nice toy. Decent transformation. Decent amount of gimmicks for a deluxe. But yeah, um, it's, you know, I, I do think this it wears things better. I think it wears things better. Uh, Transkeeto. Uh, we've talked about before. We, we've done a whole video on him. Now, I'm not going to put him to flea market. I'm going to put him bottom of the bargain bin because we did agree that this toy functionally is better than a lot of people give it credit for. I mean, there is some fun to be had with the figure. Overall, it's just a really butt ugly figure that, uh, you know, most kids are just not going to want to give a chance to. Um, yeah, uh, it's not as bad as people say, but it's still not great. It is still not a great figure. Now we talk about the Waspinator again, and here's again, like, they have this weird thing where, like, every now and then a figure comes up where it's just flat gray head. I don't know what they were thinking. So, yeah, the Waspinator in the original design, like I said, I'm not as big, toy-wise, I'm not as big on the green and yellow. Uh, if we're just, if we're being honest here, like, completely divorced from character identity. We're just going on how good I think the toy is, and I think that does kind of hurt it. The deco for the robot parts definitely hurts it. Still not bad, though. So like I said, I can't put it as high as... You know, the toy itself is fine. The toy itself is fine. Um, Yeah, I can't put it as high as Buzzsaw, because like Buzzsaw's color scheme really makes that mold pop a lot. Um, I, I think I want to put it like bottom of premium. Because it's... It's... Mm. You know what? No, top of retail because it's the mold is still problematic. The mold is still problematic, and I just don't find the color scheme quite as interesting as his redo. Okay, so uh, now that that contra now that I'm going to get flamed in the comments for that, let's move on to Wolfang. And again, we've already seen a redo of this toy that's better than the original. K9 is, I mean, the sculpt itself, the mold itself as a toy, as a Beast Wars toy, is really, really good. But then you have just kind of a dull wolf deco you know you can make a wolf look really really cool I mean, take a look at the telemocha repaint by the way that's a really cool take on this toy but then again you have mostly flat blue uh you know the rope most of the robot carries over that gray they have just that flat like uh gray you know the lack of any kind of airbrushing or anything to make the the fur look a little bit more natural uh, and yeah, you have one where, yeah, toy-wise, the mold is good. Deco-wise, it just drags it down. So I can't put it to Holy Grail. Gotta be down here in premium, because it's still a good toy. It's just not that good of a look. Which brings us to our final entry, Pterosaur. So, again, we've already seen a better repaint that we've already talked about. I like Laser Beak way better as far as color, but he does kind of wear essentially the same color scheme, just kind of inverted and different. It's like a little bit of purple and a lot of red. Um, and, yeah, it makes the toy look a little bit more flat. 
it's one of those, it is at least a toy where they actually did put a lot of effort into the head head paint. It's again one of those figures where I think like maybe one less color would be a little bit better because they also kind of threw some green in for the scaling on the back. Uh, I think if that was back to purple and it spread the purple out a little bit more across the figure, I think I'd be a little bit more into it. Uh, that said, still not a bad toy. Yeah, but again, it just it has a repaint that just makes it hit so it has a repaint that just makes it hit so differently that like it dra it goes from like low end of the premium to like middle of the retail. All right, that is it. That's the list. I feel like this is going to be a divisive one. Um, I feel like my personal opinions on what goes where is going to be very different than what someone out there is going to pick. But for now, we're going to keep it to that. Uh, and that's going to be the list. Feel free to disagree in the comments below, because that's what these kind of videos are for. They're for starting discussion and telling me that, wow, your favorite Beast Wars toy should have absolutely been a Holy Grail. Tell me why Inferno needed to be Holy Grail. But that's it for me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I will see you next time.